are back with another round of Duty Mock Interview Series. I am Jose and I will be your host for today. And today I'm here with Andres that I'm going to interview him for the role of an experienced Python Django developer. Okay. Uh, and before we go, I'd like to remind you that the question that we are going to be seeing today might be different if you come to a, a touring interview because this question was selected for a YouTube purpose. Okay. As that said, let's get started. So, uh, first of all, uh, how are you doing, Andres, and how is your day doing so far? Hi, Jose. Doing pretty good. It's been a pretty interesting day, so I'm doing some nice work. Nice. So, um, to get us this, I would like to ask you to introduce yourself and tell me a little bit about your experience, okay, your, your past projects, and then I will get from there. Sure. So my name is Andres Espinosa. I'm from Bucaramanga, Colombia. I'm a software developer with over five years of experience in full stack web development and hybrid model development. When it comes to front end, I've worked with JavaScript on frameworks like Angular and React.js. Back in development, I work with Python with frameworks like Django and Flask. And mobile development, I work with Flutter for hybrid development for both Android and iOS. I have experience in various industries like fintech, I work at healthcare, tourism, and logistics companies, developing robust and innovative solutions to their problems, and always keeping in mind uh, mobile and desktop environments. Nice, 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 nice. So, uh, could you please let me know a few interesting projects that you have been working on? Sure. So, a couple come to mind. Uh, the first one is a highly interactive 3D website that we did for a tourism client that used Django in 3AS to display this map of the region that has all the, like I said, attractions and points of interest with low poly models. And the other one would be a full software for a delivery company that allowed for real time tracking of both their drivers and their deliveries that use the full suite of what Django has to offer. It had web sockets, RS API, uh, hiding security, and it was very able to be horizontally scaled on AWS Cloud. Nice. And you mentioned that you use D3JS, which is a JavaScript library, right? Yes. So uh, I have a follow-up question for that. How would you pass data from Python to the D3JS? So those were composed of two processes. The first process was the view, get from the database, the coordinates, names, labels, and some more information that needed to display. On the template, uh, there was a script that got all that information and called an API in Django that downloaded the models for display. Uh, this download had file compression, it had caching, and it had uh, asynchronous loading times mm -hmm. so it wasn't a big paint it was just uh, everything would paint out as it was loading the page so that was how we did it with 3js got you all right okay and so let me let's now start talking about the Django. okay uh what is uh what's the use of middlewares in, in Django? So middlewares is a logic that is executed every time you make a response to a request to a view or any other API or any other point of your application, meaning that the user makes a request, then we got the information, do some processing, and then we serve the response that we get from the view. Got you. And could you please explain me, um, let's see, could you please explain the Django architecture? Sure. Django uses a modified version of the popular MVC pattern. So instead of having a controller, we have a template. So our model stores the data. We have the view that connects to the model and it serves a template, which uses HTML, JavaScript, and has the Django template engine to be able to render the data that we get from the view right out of the path. Cool. And what are the different modules in Hiding style in Django? We have extra based classes, which is a parent that has all the information that the child needs, and we don't need to write it again on the child. We need we have multi-table models, which is 
sort of similar, but instead all the childs have their own records in the database. And we have proxy models, which allow us to basically clone a father to our children. And we are able to override all the information that we get from the father and the children. Okay, great, great, great. And so yeah, previous in your previous answer, you mentioned that you work with caching, right? In your application. Yes. Uh, could you please explain me uh, the catch strategies in Django? Sure, we got various methods of caching. Uh, we have memcache, which is using the memory that is in the server. This one is like the fastest and the most efficient. It's the one that we use with the project because even though the, the models were low poly, they still had some pretty decent size for a website. There is file system caching, which is just storing our caching files uh, on the server. Local memory caching, which is the de facto one that comes when you create your Django project. And we have database caching, which is good when you have a really nice, powerful database with very well-defined indexes. It can give you a better performance than the other mentioned one. Got you, got you. And how would you explain, okay, the authentication in Django? And also, can we use uh, middleware for that? Yes. Basically, authentication is used as a middleware in Django, right? So we have both authentication and authorization. So we can have users, those users have permissions. Those permissions could be assigned to groups. Let's say that uh, there is an administrative group and a sales group. So they have their own set of permissions and it's easier for the developer to establish them. Django has the most common hashing systems that there is, uh, MP5, MSHA, 256. We have four validations. And if we want to use Django as a full-on authentication backend, mm -hmm. it's easy to plug and play to other projects that are maybe using other languages. Okay. And so we can use Django as uh, API too, right? Yes. All right. There is a full-on framework that's called the REST framework. Mm -hmm. that this is very easy to install and it gives us full capabilities for developing very simple and very powerful APIs. Nice. And could you please explain me, um, say, if you make a call to this API, then we, it will return for us uh, XML or, or uh, uh, JSON or anything else, right? Could you please explain me the response lifecycle? Sure. So you make a request, right? Uh, Django creates an HTTP request object. It loads the settings.py file. Uh, it checks that is, if there are middlewares that need to be run. If there are, we go through those middlewares. And after that, we go to the router. The router decides which one is the view that is going to serve this request. It gets all the information. If there were middlewares, we get the information that the middleware returned. And we get to the view and eventually we just get an HTTP response object that is sent back to the client or the browser. Okay, great. Um, all right, so, and what are the databases supported by Django? So Django supports the big databases, the Peshmas, the, the standard right out of the box. We got Postgres, Maria, MySQL, Oracle, and SQLite. It also has plugins from Microsoft, SQL, IB. IBM, SAP. Uh, there may be some other third packages that are out there for uh, databases. And officially, Django doesn't support any non-SQL databases, uh, Couchbase or something like any other non-SQL that are not supported officially. All right. And that's uh, lead to my next question. How would we connect Django to MongoDB or Alex Search, for example? So if you go uh, MongoDB, if you go to the website, they have the documentation for the plugin that is for Django. Uh, you will install it through pip, and then you go to the settings.py file, and it's fairly easy to set up. Uh, it's not bad, it's just that it's not officially supported. So you need to go through your vendor first, and they will most likely have the installation process for it, but it all comes down to there's a pip package that you install, and then you go to the settings.py file, and you set it up. Got you. All right. So, and what is Django field classes or field class? So the field class is an abstraction of what a row in a database looks like, right? 
So when we're making our models and we're making our stars, we need to add the columns to our tables. So this is how we will do so. We set up the data type, be it bar chart, number, integer, boolean, whatever we require. If it's null or not, if it's a primary or a foreign key, so on and so forth is kind of this method that allows us to map databases in general. Cool. And so, um, do you know what is um, mixing? Do you have experience work with mixings? What are mixings? Yeah, uh, I have plenty of experience because mixing is kind of like the big thing when you're using the REST framework. Uh, mixing is a type of inheritance that allows you to combine various other pieces of code into one code. So talking about the REST framework example, if you wanted to have very quickly an endpoint that had get, put, post, patch, and delete, you add the mixing for get, the mixing for post, the mixing for delete, and the mixing for put, and it out of the bat gives that endpoint, that view, all the capabilities that are required for it to be an API. Okay, uh, and what do you understand about uh, Django admin interface? So the admin interface is a way that you can very quickly and very easily develop like a dashboard to manage all the data in your applications. Yeah? So when you create an app, when you go to the, to the command line to create an app, you get an admin.py file. There you can add the models and the views that you want to include in that interface. From then you can either download a template. Uh, they're fairly easy, fairly common. You just go and search for them for a template or you can create your own template and you can specify what template you want to check so that the UI is different from what the generic Django UI has by all of the box. Got you. And so, uh, what what are the ways to customize uh, the functionalities? Sorry, what's the, the question? Yeah, sure. What's the way that we can customize functionality in the Django, Django uh, admin? So there are two ways. Like there's the downloading or a plugin or a template. You go into the settings.py file. There is a section for admin and you add them there and that's going to work right at the path or you can go into the root of your project and there's going to be an admin OPY and you can have JavaScript modules and you can add them on a parameter that is called JS. And then you will basically will be adding or removing or changing any functionality that you need. Uh, for example, if you need something along the lines of, I need filtering and I searching on the tables that are displayed on the admin interface, uh, there are plugins to do that, or you can implement your own logic. Got you. And with, when it comes to security, okay, uh, what are the best practice, practice in terms of security in Django? So Django has, by default, enabled some protection against very common threats. That it has SQL injection protection, which comes from by default, which is very important to have. Cross-site scripting, if you're using uh, an API and is, you're going to be using it on very different environments such as mobile and desktop. There is cross-site request forgery. And other than that, you obviously it's very good to add the ability to enforce SSL and HTTPS, which doesn't come on by default for development reasons. You can add session security when you're managing authentications. You can add cleanjacking protection and you can add host hair validation. Those are like the standard that every project needs to have for it to be secure in production. Cool. And before I go to my next question, I would like to call upon our uh, developers out there. So if you have three plus years of experience and are confident with the skill set that you possess, you can head on turing.com slash jobs and apply for the job that is more suitable for your tech stack, okay? Once you apply, you have to pass in the Turing vetting process. And then once you pass, you get a job as we did, okay? Also, you can follow Turi on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, uh, Instagram, what else? Uh, Twitter, okay? Stay close that I'm pretty much sure that you will get the job that you deserve, okay? 
my last question for you, uh, Andres. So, uh, what is SQL injection? Okay, and how can we prevent SQL injection in Django? So, SQL injections is a vulnerability where your user on a form, on a request, on an API call, sends an SQL query and there's not a protection for it and the server and the backend actually executes it and returns the data that the attacker wants to see. So the very basic simple SQL injection protection is just uh, what is called escaping the queries, which is just formatting and sanitizing the test so that it doesn't run anything that is it, be it if it was a query of a JavaScript. And Django actually takes care of this by default, but you can also check if the protection is in place going to the settings.debug file. There's going to be a security section and there should be uh, something alluding the SQL injection. Nice. All right. Thank you for explaining. So thank you, Andrew, again. That was really nice to speak to you today. And that that is all for today. Okay. Uh, and to everybody else, thank you for watching these videos and I'm pretty much sure that we enjoyed this video as I did. Okay. Uh, you can write down a message and say what kind of tooling mock interview you would see in the upcoming video. Okay. I've seen people commenting uh, Flutter. We are preparing for a Flutter. Okay. What else? Uh, follow Turi on, on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Clubhouse, uh, YouTube, any, anywhere. And as I said, stay close that you get the job that you deserve. Okay? Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Turin.com. Like this video if you enjoyed the content. Let me know in the comment section below uh, if this is uh, similar that we're getting out there. Uh, as that said, that's a wrap. Thank you all. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all again. Okay, take care.